Welcome to Non-Denomination Group Bible Study. This is our Sunday morning word, and we greet each of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I've got a lot <clears throat> on my heart this morning, and I certainly want to share a message that uh, I believe would begin this new year. And thank God that he has protected us and carried us through 2020, but we are the first Sunday in 2021. And we want to go before the Lord in prayer, and we want to go into our scripture. And, you know, <clears throat> I think that... Uh, this is going to be, uh, as someone said, a tough road to hope. I've got a lot in my heart, and uh, I pray that you would help me this morning in praying for, amen, that this word that I deliver this morning, I pray that it will enlighten and it will impact the body of Christ. It's not a, a easy word to give, but I want you to bear with me and pray with me. Uh, we want to go before we pray to the scriptures. And I want to use, because I basically know what's in my heart. And I know that it is God's word. And how am I going to struggle through it? I have no idea. But I know that with the help of the Lord, nothing is impossible. So we want to go to Joel, the second chapter, and I want to read two verses of scripture to get our focus in. <clears throat> And then we will pray. The Bible says in Joel, one of the minor prophets, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. The next verse. And also upon servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. Heavenly Father, we come humbly before thy throne of grace in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said you are our refuge, you are our strength, and you are our very present help in a time of trouble. Lord God, in the midst of things that are going on in this world today, Lord, I pray that you would strengthen us in the areas of our weakness. I pray, dear God, for every husband. I pray for every wife. I pray for every father. I pray for every mother. I pray for sisters and brothers. I pray for grandchildren. I pray for great-grandchildren. And Lord, I pray for great-grandchildren, if there be any. Lord, I pray that your word, dear God, will bring a renewal to our minds and our lives that we might impact this world that you created, dear God, for you said that we shall live as heaven upon earth. Strengthen us, dear God, this day, and Lord, bless every household. Lord, go into the jails and prisons. Go into the nursing homes. I pray, dear God, for every hospital. I, I pray, dear God, that you bring a healing word. In Jesus' precious name, we do pray. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen. amen. I know that my message is the church's great mistake. Now, I, I know that that's difficult because there is no perfect church. 
But yet there he is, a perfect church. The Bible tells us that in Matthew 16, 18, that Jesus said these words, upon this rock I will build my church. So the church belongs to Jesus Christ. And he says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In the book of Ephesians, and I just want to mention these scriptures to kind of build a foundation for what I want to tell you this morning. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.20, it says that we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the foundation of the church. Jesus Christ is perfect. Jesus Christ is God manifested in flesh. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in the 14th verse, it says, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten, full of what? Grace and truth. He was both grace and he was truth. And so how is it possible that if Jesus Christ is perfect and he's God manifested in the flesh, how is it possible for the church that he created is because my brothers and my sisters and my friends, we are the body of Christ. We are the arms, the legs, because remember, I told you one thing that I want you to always remember in John 4, 24, that God is a spirit. Amen. And no man has ever seen God. Amen. Jesus is the express image of God. Amen. So therefore, if you or I became a part of the church, it would be imperfect because the perfect God took uh, uh, imperfect sons and daughters to bring and to build up a church so that he, amen, could make them perfect. And so in the book of Joel, it says that in the last days that he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that day came to pass. That day came to pass. It was a fulfillment of Scripture. And in order for me to get you to, to see what I'm saying, I want to go to the book of Acts, the very first chapter in the book of Acts. And I'm, I'm going to rush this because I, I, I want you to get this. Acts, the first chapter. And, and it reads as follows. The form of treatise. A treatise is a a work. It's a it's 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 a, a a work a writing. And he said the form of treatise. And most of you know that the Acts was written by the doctor uh, physician Luke, and he also wrote the book of Luke. So he said the the early writing. I have made, O Theophilus. And Theophilus is a, Theo is God believer. And he said, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Go to the next verse. Until the day which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Next verse to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. Now, his passion was his death, his burial, his resurrection, and being by many infallible proof, no one could then die. No one could controvert that he had died, that he had been buried, and that he rose again. Being seen of them 40 days. Now, I want you to keep that in mind. 40 days. And he was speaking, amen, things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Go to the next verse. And in being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father, of which saith he, you've heard of me. Go ahead. Next verse. 
For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Not many days afterwards, you're going to uh, be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the next verse. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? A question. Next verse. And he said unto him, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Now, I want you to understand that that word power there uh, comes from a, a Greek word, Greek word ek, exousia. And exousia means authority. But I want you to notice this in the next verse. He said, but you shall receive power. Now, that word power comes from the Greek word dunamis, meaning dynamite. That's where we get dynamite from. He said, you're going to receive dynamite after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses, amen, unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, where people don't like you, where people hate you. I want you to be a witness there and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And we, my brothers and sisters, are in the uttermost parts of the earth even today. That's why we have to stand on the word of God. We got to deliver the word of God. Amen. Like he said, we are to be witnesses. And you got to be a witness, but you got to have power. Amen. So that before you can be a witness. Okay, go ahead. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. A cloud took him out of their sight. Next verse. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up. So he's going up. Two men stood by them in white apparel. Now listen carefully what these two men said. Which also said, you men of Galilee... Why stand you gazing up into heaven? Why are you looking up in heaven? This same Jesus, I want you to understand that. This same Jesus, amen, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall also come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. So Jesus went into, into heaven. But he told them, don't depart from Jerusalem. Go to the next verse. Then... Then they returned unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, the Sabbath day's journey. Okay, now the point that I want to get to is I want you to see that the Spirit of God, this is what the Bible refers. We know that the Bible talks about sowing and it talks about reaping. But the Bible also talks about it talks about the former rain, and it talks about the latter rain. And I want you to know that the former rain, amen, is when, amen, the Spirit of God descended upon the birth of the church, amen. And I want to tell you why the church has made a mistake, amen. The church has made a mistake that's affecting us today. Yes, Jesus is perfect. Jesus has a, a perfect church, but we as believers, amen, we are imperfect. Amen. We do not have all power like he has. We don't know all things like he knows. We are not everywhere like he is. So therefore, here's where the mistake came. I want you to go to the second chapter of the book of, of Acts, and let's look uh, quickly, because I'm building my case right now. As I remember, Bishop Brady used to say, I'm building my case now. Amen. The Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Amen. So this is a, a fulfilling of Scripture. Pentecost is not a, a denomination. Pentecost is, is a feast day. It's a feast day of the harvest, the, the, the giving thanks of God for a bountiful harvest. This is the beginning, amen, of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost, and the word pente means 50 
Remember, he was out 40 days preaching, amen, and, and teaching them things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And they went up into the upper room of which you're going to see. The Bible says, and when they, the next verse, they were uh, fully come. They were in one accord. Amen. Go ahead, back. was fully come, so it was on that 50th day that they were with one accord in one place. See, they were in one accord. That's the thing, amen, that what tries to divide people today of being in one accord. There's Baptists, there's uh, Methodists, there's Holy Rollers, there is uh, this church and that church. But the Bible says when they, amen, are one accord in one place. Notice what happened, my brothers and sisters. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Next verse. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set up on each of them. Amen. And the Bible says the next verse, and they were all, not some of them, not part of them, were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. So God filled them, amen, with the Holy Ghost. And I want you to know that when the Bible talks about the, the former rain, this is the beginning of the former rain. But there's going to be, amen, a latter rain. Amen. There's going to be just like there was going to be a harvest. Amen. When you sow, you get the first fruits. Jesus Christ, amen, was the first fruit. And then, amen, when he comes back again, he's coming back, amen, to take those that have the Spirit of God. For the Bible says that, amen, by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or whether we be free by that one spirit. There's not, amen, two spirits, but there's one spirit that puts us into, amen, the body of Christ. And that's the spirit that begins to renew our mind and change our, amen, old nature into a new nature, amen. For the Bible says if any man, white man, black man, yellow man, red man, be in Christ, hallelujah, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things become new. We are in this period of newness now. Amen. This is the beginning. Amen. And the need. And where did the church make the mistake? Let me quickly get to it because I don't want to get too excited about it, but I'm telling you, it shouldn't be just songs should make you excited. Songs shouldn't just cause you to dance. Amen. Songs shouldn't just cause you to run the aisle. It should be the word of God. Amen. The word that's quick, the word that's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. That's the thing that we ought to get excited about, because the word, amen, is, amen, will dominate, amen, this old nature. The word, amen, will transform our lives that we can, amen, come up, amen, out of the water speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give the utterance. We can be in our bathroom. You could be in your car, my brother or sister. Amen. And the power of God descend upon you. It'll cause you to shout. Amen. It'll cause you to get overjoyed. You don't need, amen, a drum. You don't need an organ. Amen. Those things are good, but we need the Word of God because heaven is going to pass away. And it but his word shall never pass away. But I want to get you, amen, to what I want to reveal to you is the greatest mistake or the great mistake of the church. I want you to know that, amen, that in, and we just celebrated New Year. Well, in 18, now this is going to be a history lesson for you. In 1899, in Topeka, Kansas, there was a school called Bethel Bible School. And in the school, they had read in the book of Acts, they read Acts 2, 4, 
when it says that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. You know, I've heard so many, uh, amen, uh, people began to say, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you might say that, but there is a spirit, amen, that will inflame your heart, amen, and you begin to speak into a language that you don't understand. But the Bible says that that, that that group in in Topeka, Kansas, in 1899, 1899, they saw in the scripture in Hebrews 13, 8, it said that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Jesus Christ is the same today. And Jesus Christ is the same forever. So they began to fast and pray. And I want you to know that it was a, a student there in this Bible study. Her name was Agnes Osmond. And Agnes Osmond began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. History, uh, secular history reports that it was for days that she was speaking, uh, amen, Chinese. And she didn't know that she was speaking Chinese, but she was overpowered, amen, by, and I want you to know that there was also a preacher. Now, I want you to remember that this is 1899. In 1899, racial prejudice was running rampant. They were still taking Sundays to hang, amen, uh, blacks after service, amen, in the South and around the country, amen. But I want you to know that there was a man by the name of William Seymour, and he was in that. They wouldn't let him into that group, but they let him, amen, into some of the studies. He looked up, uh, 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 secular history, say he used to look through the window, amen, but he had a desire to be used by God. And as a result of it, amen, he, amen, was filled, amen, with the Spirit of God. And he went, his name was William J. Seymour. He was born, amen, in 1906. Six, and he died in 1915. Uh, I take that back. He died in 1922. He was 52 years of age. He came out of Louisiana. But I want you to know that he took that message and he spread that message. Amen. I'm giving you a history lesson now. He spread that message and it ended up in 312 Azusa Street in California. He went to a church there and they... Uh, uh, he began to talk about, amen, speaking in tongues. And many of you know that in your Baptist background, whenever a person would begin to, amen, uh, begin to utter uh, the things of God, they tell them to take that back where you got it from. You didn't get it here and you take it back to where. That's when those that were filled with the Spirit of God. But even now, my brothers and sisters, everybody realize we are coming to the understanding that it is is by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. But I want you to know that as a result of this, that he started a church there. And for nine years, he pastored that church. And people from everywhere all over because they began to hear about the spirit and they began to hear about, amen, the work that they were doing. People, black people, amen, white people, Hispanics and Chinese. I've even seen a film where there is evidences of Chinese being. But I want you to understand one thing. I want you to understand the period of time that there was. God was calling out of people for his name's sake, like he's doing today. He's calling people out of denomination. But I want you to know that there was the assemblies of God there. Amen. There was the Pentecostal assemblies of the world. There were other Pentecostal organizations there. And they were black and white and yellow and red and all races. They were, they were there. Amen. And but because of the times, here, my brother, is where the greatest mistake was made. They got the leaders of these organizations, the Church of God and Christ, amen, the Assemblies of God. 
the Pentecostal assemblies of the world, of, of, of the Pentecostal assemblies of the world. The leaders of these churches got together and they said, and this was the great mistake that was ever made, is they began to, because of outward condition, because of racism and because of police brutality and because of all the injustices in the world, they were saying, well, you go to your people and I'll go to my people. That's why we have denominations today is a result of this. We've got so many, amen, denominations. Denominations, amen, divide us. But Jesus came to unite us with one spirit. Are we all baptized into one body? I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, what God created, the perfect church, amen, and the church that the gates of hell, amen, shall not prevail against it, amen. Amen. Nothing, amen, is going uh, to prevail against the church. Amen. Nothing, no sickness, no coronavirus, hey, nothing is going to prevail against the church. God is going to bring the church to fruition. He's going to bring the church to the harvest because he's coming back, amen, for a church without spot, without wrinkle, or any such thing. He's coming back, amen. That same Jesus that they saw go is is coming back in like manner. He's coming back, amen, for a, a man, the, the harvest. He was the first fruit. He's the only one that rose from the dead. But because of racism and because of prejudice and because of biases, they took and said, let's separate. God never intended. That was the greatest mistake. God wanted the church to be a light that shine in darkness. That's why the Bible says we are, amen, the church is the light of the world. People are not looking at the church anymore, amen. They are looking, amen, at prosperity. They are looking at, amen, power. They are looking at sexual immoralities. They are looking at these things, amen, and the Bible says that no thing, amen, nothing, amen, is going to separate us, amen, from the love of God. He's going to make a way for us, and he would have made a way for us, amen, if they had never separated. Now it's trying to, God is trying to bring us out of religion into a relationship, amen, so that we can stand on the word of God, amen, and not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can stand up and be recognized, amen, as a light that shines in a darkness, amen, in a candle. We don't hide that candle, but we put it so that everybody can see. I want you to know that there would not be a, a NAACP or there would not be a a white citizen council. There might have been, but there would have been the church, amen. The church would have been the example, amen. So they divided themselves, and as a result, we need to get back together so that we can be in one mind and where we can be in one accord. So the power of God, amen, that the gates of hell that Jesus said, amen, if there is a perfect church and I became a part of it, that church would no longer be perfect anymore because I would be in it. And if it's you, my brother, I don't care, or my sister, if your name is written, amen, and go in some church, if you don't know the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, your name on a church roll is not going to get it. I don't care what office you got, amen, in the church. I don't care what it is. It's not going to stand, amen, when Jesus comes back, amen, and it's not long. He's coming back for a church. He's coming back, amen, to bring us back into the oneness, amen. Pastor William Seymour, and one of the things about that Azusa Street that you can check out for yourself, it was 312 Azusa Street, and people from all over the world came, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they wanted to be witnesses, so they took this gospel Amen. They took this gospel back to their countries that they went in, and that was the spread of the gospel. 
It was William Seymour. They had church 24 hours a day. It was in an old uh, 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 building, and he slept upstairs, and people were being filled with the Holy Ghost from all around. I want you to know that the New York Times, mind you, the New York Times wrote an article, amen, about the miracle on Azusa Street. They said that the fire was from heaven because it is documented in 312 Azusa Street that the fire department was, was called a number of times and to come and put out the fire. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Amen. He's the same today, and he will be the same forever. And by that one spirit, amen, are we all baptized into one body. That was the great mistake of the church. And look at the struggles that we are getting in now of trying to get out of denomination. Every, this is the most divisive day of denominations. The Lutherans, the Baptists, the Catholics, the this, the that, and they all go and they are separate. Amen. But God is calling us, and I believe in this 2021, God is calling us to an accountability. Amen. He wants the, amen, the former reign. He wants the latter reign, amen, to be explicit into our lives. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that when you were born, you were crying. When you were born, you were crying, and everybody else was smiling. My brothers and sisters, you need to live every day today with the power of God that so when you die, you will be smiling, but everybody else will be crying. Amen. We can, amen, impact. The Bible says to the uttermost parts of the world. Wherever you are, my brothers and sisters, amen, you can receive this changing word, amen. You can receive the word of God and it can transform your life. It could take you from darkness, amen, to light. It could take you from uh, sickness to health. It can take you from weakness to strength. It can take you from higher, uh, lower depths to higher heights, my brothers and sisters. And I want you to know that we can overcome. We will overcome by the power of God. We just need to get into one mind and one accord and watch God work. Amen. We are not concerned with the outward. Man looks upon the outward appearance, but God, amen, looks at the heart. And God is dealing, amen, with the hearts of men and women today. And I want you to know that we have got to get out of, amen, anything amen, and lift up the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. That's our hope for today, amen. If we have hope in Christ Jesus in this life only of all men, the Bible says we are most miserable because it's appointed unto us once to die, and after death there will be a judgment. And my brothers and sisters, God wants to take us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And the Bible says, and I've shared this with you, amen, time and time again, as many as received them, to them he gave the power to become sons and daughters of the God that spoke this world into existence. My brothers and sisters, all you've got to do is obey the gospel. I know that I'm about to preach a message about the gospel, but we need to obey the gospel. Amen. Because judgment begins at the house of God, and it begins at the house of God. What shall it be to them that obey not the gospel of God? It's the good news. Well, my brother, good news about what? That somebody died that somebody was buried and somebody rose again and that was Jesus Christ and he's coming back amen to receive those that were amen born again into and so that we can continue to live 
amen, with him. The church is his, and all you need to do is obey the gospel by death, burial, and resurrection. Repentance, baptism in his name, amen, and receiving the spirit of God, amen. And we will be in unity waiting for the coming of the Lord. And we can say with all the prophets, come quickly, Lord Jesus, come quickly, amen. So this vial, amen, the Bible says that the harvest is in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. For the Bible says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ are gonna rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. And the Bible says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then in the last verse it says, comfort one another. Amen. Comfort one another with these words. We can be comforted no matter whether we've got a dollar in our pocket. Amen. We can be comforted whether we have any stimulus check. Amen. We can be comforted because the God, amen, that robed uh, himself in flesh came. He's going to prepare a place for us. He said that where I am, there you may be also. My brothers and sisters, I want to pray with you. I want to pray that you see how that this great mistake that was made, hey amen, we need to get back together to be the light and the salt that God wants us to be. Remember, uh, salt is made of two chemicals, sodium and chloride. Each one is poison by itself, but when you put it together, amen, it is a preserver. We need to preserve, amen, our area. We need to be an example of a believer in the things that we say and also in the things that we do. Amen, marriages are being destroyed, amen, but we know that God, amen, will make a way out of no way. If you, this morning, have seen Amen. This great mistake. My brothers and sisters, it's time to allow the Spirit of God to deal with you. And I just want to pray with you just this moment. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind every spirit of oppression, spirit of depression, spirit of fear, and the spirit of failure. And Lord, we walk by faith and not by sight. And Lord, you said in your word, if we come unto you, dear God, that you will give us rest, rest for our souls. And Heavenly Father, in the midst of all the trials and the tribulations, Lord, we look for the rest that only you can give. Money can't do it. Pleasure can't do it. Popularity can't do it. Only you can, amen, heal the vacuum or fill the vacuum that's within each of us. Lord, I pray that you would fill some vacuum today. And Lord, I pray that you would give them, amen, a desire to want to know you and the power of your death, your burial, and your resurrection. And Lord, I pray that they would reach out. If they need help in any area, just message me. Amen. Let me know that I, I prayed with you and I, I received him and I will tell you what must you do to be saved. Lord, strengthen the weak. Give deliverance to those that are bound. And Lord, in all things, Lord, we'll be careful to give you the praise. Not for the glory of man, but for your glory, Lord. You, you're worthy of all of our praise. Praise ye the Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you and keep you. We will see you Tuesday.